In this example, we want to set up a set of differential equations to model a physical system involving three different tanks. So the details are here on what we know about these tanks. We know that for tank A, we have clean water flowing in at a rate of three gallons per minute. For tank B, water with a salt concentration of 0.2 pounds per gallon flows in at four gallons per minute. Water leaves tank C at nine gallons per minute. We have a flow rate from B to A, a flow rate from A to C, a flow rate from B to C, and then we have some initial conditions. So let's first set up a diagram with these different streams on it and sort of see what's going on. Then we can write the equations from that diagram. So we have our three tanks, A, B, and C. And we know that clean water flows into tank A at a rate of three gallons per minute. So I have an inflow stream here, three gallons per minute, and zero salt. I have a concentration of 0.2 pounds per gallon flowing into tank B at a rate of four gallons per minute. So that's an inflow stream here at four gallons per minute and 0.2 pounds per gallon. I have water leaving tank C at a rate of nine gallons per minute. I have water flowing from B to A at a rate of two gallons per minute. So this rate at two gallons per minute. I have A to C at a rate of six gallons per minute. And I have B to C at a rate of three gallons per minute. And then we have these initial conditions here that we'll factor in as we go through solving this problem. So with tank problems, like always, let's start by looking at the volume first, see what that looks like, and then rope that into talking about the actual salt concentration later on. So if we look at, say, the volume in tank A, how does that volume change with time? Well, I'm adding in 3 from that orange inflow stream. I'm also adding in 2 from the stream coming from B, but I'm taking away 6 going in towards C, so this is minus 1. If you look back up, we know that our initial volume here is 200 gallons. Integrating this gives me a minus t, so that means that as a function of time, volume in A as a function of time is going to be 200 minus t. Let's do the same for the other two tanks. So for B, I have an inflow rate of four, an outflow rate of two going to A and three going to C, which also gives me a minus one. And since that volume started at 300, we know that VB as a function of T is going to be 300 minus T, same idea. And for C, we can see it's going to be constant because of 6 and 3 coming in and 9 going out. So C does not change. The volume in C is always 100. And we will need these as we go to start factoring in the salt concentration into this whole process here. Now, if we let Q, A, B, and C be the salt content in pounds in the different tanks, say QA is the salt content in tank A, well, what do we know? We can go back to our accumulation equation to figure out how Q changes with T. We go back to the diagram. We see we have an inflow stream here. It is three times zero in terms of the amount of salt coming in. We will also add in two times the concentration from B, which will be QB over the volume in B. And then we also lose at a rate of six times concentration in A. So we'll see from this diagram is that the rate of change of the salt content of tank A is going to be three gallons per minute times zero, because there's no salt in that inflow stream. We also get two gallons per minute times the concentration in tank B, so that's QB divided by VB. And then we're losing six gallons per minute times the concentration in A. And if we look back at our volume equation, these are the same three terms that we had for our rate of change for volume, the three, the two, and the minus six, the three, the two, and the minus six. Now they just have concentrations of salt attached to them. So we can fill in our VA and VB there to get that DQA DT is zero for the first term plus two times QB over VB, which was 300 minus T, and then minus six QA, over 200 minus t, because that was what VA was. So that gets us our first equation in the system. We can now do the same thing for the other two tanks. So for B, we again go back to the diagram. We will have an inflow at four gallons per minute times the 0.2 pounds per gallon, and then two outflows, one at two and one at three. So that will give us the initial inflow of four gallons per minute, times 0 0.2 pounds per gallon. We have one outflow at two gallons per minute, which has a concentration of 
QB over V becomes an outflow from the B tank. And then minus three gallons per minute, again, QB over VB. Or in this case, we can actually combine these two together because they're both outflows from the same tank. Even they're going different ways. They have the same concentration and affect the salt content of tank B in the same way. So we can write this as then 0 0.8 pounds per minute minus 5 QB divided by VB, which is 300 minus T. And then for the last tank, go back to the diagram again. We have an inflow stream from A at a rate of 6 gallons per minute, inflow stream from B at a rate of 3 gallons per minute, and then an outflow from C at a rate of 9 gallons per minute. So, so from the accumulation equation, we get that this should be 6 gallons per minute inflow from A, so QA over VA, 3 gallons per minute from B, QB over VB, and then minus 9 gallons per minute times C, QC over VC. Now we plug all of our stuff in. So this will be 6 QA over VA, which was 200 minus T, plus 3 QB over VB, which was 300 minus T, and then minus 9 QC over VC, which was a constant at 100. And I'll rewrite the other two equations down here to put them all together. So that gives us our system of three equations to solve for to figure out the salt content of each of these tanks over time. That's the idea of how you can set this up using a diagram to model how the water is going to flow around and use that to build this system together that one could then solve to figure out what's going to happen over time for these three tanks and their salt content.